Hi guys, Amy here. I just wanted to check in and um, provide some final thoughts to wrap up our thesis statements discussion for next week. Um, I did intend for these to just be your initial thesis statements, so as you'll see, um, as we get into our discussion for this week, um, I'll be asking you to modify your thesis statements a little bit by adding a counter argument and building on that as we move forward in this process. So um, even though this was our discussion for last week, it doesn't mean that your thesis won't continue to change and evolve as we go through the next few weeks until your papers actually do. Um, okay, so I just wanted to pull out a few, first of all, comments that I thought were particularly helpful um, from last week's discussion. I had hoped that you guys would comment more on ways that you could improve one another's thesis statements, some kind of constructive suggestions for how to make that more effective for their essays, for each other's essays. Um, so uh, I was looking to see more of that. Uh, most of the comments kind of just talked about the issues in general, which is good for brainstorming. It's good to come up with points and it's good to maybe identify some counter arguments. But as far as the constructive um, comments, I wanted to pull out just um, really what were probably the only two that I saw doing that that I hadn't already highlighted in my midweek comments for this discussion. Um, so the first one here, I like how in your thesis you stated that livestock are not the only thing to blame. There are many different factors contributing to the rise in carbon dioxide levels. So I'm excited to read your rough draft and see what kind of research you came up with. As for the thesis, try putting the last two sentences together and change the wording a little bit because combined it would make a strong thesis. Other than that, it looks good. So this um, suggestion here about putting the last two sentences together and changing the wording a little bit to... Um, make it a stronger thesis uh, when it's combined into one sentence. That is really um, actionable. It's very helpful. That is a direct suggestion that this person can take to their writing and improve on their thesis based on this comment. So I just wanted to point out that that is the kind of constructive suggestion that we're looking for. I mean, it, it points out some strengths in the thesis. It um, also points out some weaknesses in the thesis and then ties those weaknesses to an action that this person can take to improve um, their writing. So that is particularly what we're looking for here. And then here we have another good one with a um, a uh, good suggestion for this person's thesis. I like where you were going with your thesis. However, I'm not sure where exactly you stand on the issue being discussed. Are you saying you support teens and social media? I'm just trying to make sure it's clear that's all. And so, um, again, a really good point here. You know, if, if you're not saying your position directly in your thesis, that is a problem. I mean, the whole point of the thesis is to state your position and present your overall argument. Um, and so it's really good, helpful feedback to get that that perspective from your peers that if they could not figure out what your position was then that's probably an indication that you need to be more straightforward and your thesis could be a little more clear um, and so I appreciated this person kind of hitting the nail right on the head and addressing the issue head-on here instead of beating around the bush they just came right out and said you know you need to be more explicit in stating your position as part of this thesis so like I said, these were probably the only two examples that I hadn't talked about already in my midweek updates that provided really good constructive feedback in the comments. That said, I did want to also highlight a couple of the good conversations that I saw happening um, because, again, even where you weren't um, maybe offering suggestions for how to improve your thesis statements, you were at least helping each other brainstorm, coming up with additional points, highlighting some counter arguments, and things like that. So one place where I definitely saw that happening was under Francesca's thread. I think her topic is one that maybe a lot of people can relate to, um, and so that might be part of why this happen but if you look here you can see there's a really good conversation going on part of that I do think is is in part because Francesca did check back and respond to the things that she said and then the people that commented on her even checked back and responded to the things that she said and so this is really a true conversation what we see here from Rebecca to Francesca and back to Rebecca and then Rufin weighs in and then some other people jump in and then these people Mariah and Aaron even start having a conversation back and forth so there's like layers of the conversation multiple people involved multiple responses people checking back in a true dialogue so I really appreciated that here and lots of really good uh, ideas are emerging here as well so again I do think that this is useful in terms of brainstorming on your topics
And then another one where I saw that happening was here in Crystal's original thread. She posts her thesis and then again she immediately checks back and responds to the first comment she received and then that person, Vanessa, checked back again and responded. So it just kept going. Same thing with Crystal's response to Denisha here. Then Devin chimes in and Vanessa who'd been involved in this earlier part in the conversation came back and responded to Devin and then responded again to the issue overall and then we got even some more people chiming in in Crystal's reflections at the end. So again this is like a six-way conversation going on right here just within this one thread and it's all united around uh, Crystal's topic and so um, you know again maybe it's because this issue is one that a lot of people can relate to but regardless um, true uh, dialogue going on here really good engagement with each other and with the content so I really appreciated that from all of you. You all also had a lot of really good things to say in your end of week reflections so I wanted to pull out some examples there of things that I thought you had learned that you could really bring to and apply as you work to revise your thesis statements um, in the upcoming week or weeks. This person said, I know that our thesis statement will evolve through our process and I'm thankful for that. Reading through the chapters this week I learned many helpful tips to form an effective thesis. I now know that I need to add tension to my thesis and make sure that the question being presented are complex in nature to push my audience into questioning what they already know about the topic. I think my topic is specific enough to take in many directions and maybe present some new and unrealized solutions to some of the issues at hand. So I just want to pull out a few points here that I think are particularly insightful. One, uh, yes, your thesis statement will continue ev to evolve, and like this person says, you should be grateful for that. You should be glad that you're not locked in to exactly what you thought your thesis was going to be in the beginning, because you will end up with a much more effective piece of writing, simply um, because of the fact that you allowed it to evolve and, and take shape and grow over time, because oftentimes in what we sit down and write initially, as we know, is not always our best, and so letting it kind of move forward through time is really one of the benefits of revision. Um, let's see, creating tension in the thesis, that was another really good point here. That is kind of going to be the focus of our discussion this week as you add counter arguments to the beginning of your thesis statement so that you can push your position right up against the alternative position. And that clash, that immediate push of one point against another is what will create tension um, in your readers minds and within your overall argument and create some urgency for your argument as well. Um, Let's see. And then presenting some new and unrealized solutions. I thought that was a really insightful comment as well because oftentimes part of the problem is that um, maybe the solutions that have been tried in the past have failed. And so if you can look at your issue and say, well, what's the problem here? Um, is there anything that's been tried in the, fa in the past and not particularly succeeded? And how can I push my proposal or my solution up against those prior solutions to kind of create some tension there as well? So all of this I thought was really insightful. This person says, reading through responses and continuing on my research journey, I feel like there are more negatives to social media use, but I still want to try and shed some light on the positives. So what we're seeing here is that this is a person who went into their argument thinking that they wanted to be in favor of social media. However, through their research, they're finding more negative information, but they still feel like they want to try and shed light on the positives. So there's two things I want to point out here. One is that you should try to remain open-minded enough in your research that if you find information that contradicts the argument that you initially wanted to make, that you can change your mind and reverse your position. Because that's really the whole point of doing research. We don't do research to confirm the opinions we already had. We do research to find out new information and use new information to shape new opinions. And so I would always encourage all of you, if you find information in your research that contradicts the position that you had initially held, please be open-minded enough to be willing to change your point of view. It doesn't seem like that's what this person wants to do. So with that said, I will offer a kind of um, alternative perspective on that, which is that sometimes the urgency in a topic comes from the fact that it pushes up against a widely held belief. So it if in this case the widely held belief is that social media use is negative, it does create some urgency for the argument to then say, you know, although you may think it's all negative, I in fact can show you some positives on this issue. So I think what it really comes down to is, is there good information 
to support the argument that you want to make. And by good, I mean credible, reliable, current, solid information that really does support your position. If there's not, that's when you have to be willing to revise and uh, change your point of view, shift your opinion even to the alternative stance. Um, but if there is good information to support your argument, credible information that's appropriate for an academic audience, it's just maybe not the widely held position, that's okay. It's okay to take a rare stance on an issue. And so I just kind of want to balance those two things in response to this comment here. And this person says, it was great to see this topic promote dialogue. However, after reading through the other thesis statements, I realized I still need a lot of work. This week's video was the best one yet. I really learned how I need to change my thesis, developing my points with the question. I also wonder if there's some uh, substance to discover this question or if it's just a hot topic. So this person is referring to their um, particular issue at hand, and I think it's mental illness in this case. Um, I wanted to pull this out and say thanks because it is reassuring to me to hear that the videos are helpful. I'm not sure if this is referring to the lecture video under content or to my midweek update video but regardless I do want to um, help you guys and I hope that the videos can give you actual real suggestions for things you can do in your writing so that's good feedback for me and then here where this person maybe is a little concerned if it's just a trendy issue or if there's really some substance to it I would say that for the most part all of you and what I've seen do have very um, substantial solid topics that aren't just trendy or whatever this person is trying to say here I mean if a if a topic is popular in the current sentiment that is a sign that there's an urgent issue that needs to be addressed and so just because it's a hot topic that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing that can be a good thing because it suggests that the audience is concerned there is exigency there is urgency it's significant for a large number of people and things along those lines okay so I've checked all of your topics and I'm pretty sure um, you know or I actually know I would have intervened at this point if I thought any of your topics were not really substantial enough so that brings me into this final comment this week's discussion brought to light that I have no idea how to even start this paper. I learned lots of useful techniques in the book, but I'm still stuck. There's a lot of information about this topic. Am I supposed to argue both sides or do the paper on one side? Right now, I'm not sure if I can do the required amount of pages. So, yes, you need to take a side. There are multiple sides to every issue. And like I said, I know what topics you're doing, so I know that all of your topics are controversial. So, you need to take the position that you feel is the proper course of action in response to whatever research question you started with. So if your research question was, you know, what's the best way to address violence in schools, then your position would be the best way to address violence in schools is to do X or whatever your proposal is going to be. Um, so remember, you do need a higher order central claim or proposal or an evaluation to link all your other points or reasons back to. Um, and so that will really get you to your um, page limit. Um, I'm concerned if some of you are maybe just doing arguments of cause effect um, or some or a more basic type of claim because then you won't probably get to the five or six page um, length requirement here. Um, but if you have an overall complex central claim like a proposal or evaluation and several reasons to justify that claim as well as a few counter arguments that you'll acknowledge and overcome then you will have at least eight paragraphs in your paper if you had a paragraph for each point for your proposal for each counter argument and for your introduction and conclusion and so for a six page paper eight paragraphs really isn't outside of the scope of what's realistic for that length. Um, to write eight solid paragraphs, you probably would need to get close to six pages anyway. So make sure that you have a really complex overall claim and at least three or four supporting reasons and at least probably two major counter arguments that you're going to acknowledge in addition to your intro and conclusion. And that will really help you get up to that length requirement. So it's not just going to be like your basic five paragraph essay that you may have seen in high school. And hopefully the surprising reversal discussion for this week will help you see that there are some much more complex things that you need to add to your thesis and develop in the body of your paper than what you may have done in other arguments that you've done in the past. 
Okay, so I did really appreciate all the thought you put into your final reflections this week. Those were very um, good to read and reassuring. I think in general this was a pretty productive discussion, so I appreciate all your hard work, and let's just keep revising those thesis statements as we go forward with the discussion for this week. Thank you.